Hello guys, today I'll introduce you a simple network area of MPIS. It's a very interesting lab. Um, this is the whole interface, the whole environment, as you can see in, in those uh, in those characters. And I, or, I already configured the whole interface. So as you can see, let's start R1 router. And I'll show you the configure. You can see that well, I configured those those four routers to the area link, and we use the we use the one dot one dot one dot one to be the R8 router ID. So now you can check this. In here, I can connect to the R4. As you can see here, I use R1 to ping to R4 to ping the uh, 10 da 1 da 3 4 da 4. It's already collected. It's already reachable, right? So, so I'll show you the, the first the first thing I'll show you is the MPL's LDP label. I let me check in the uh, router one show MPLS MPLS LDP neighbor. As you can see here, the above in the LDP label displayed on RE, there is an LDP label. Its LDP router ID is 2.2.2, .2 right? And the label special space ID is zero. And in and indicating that it's based on the platform label space. TCB connection two dot two dot two and and its port is six one six two nine two one da one da one and says four six indicating that this LDP connection is established on the one da one da one source port of TCP to port six six two nine of destination two da two da two da two because the 2.2.2.2 address is large, so it's the in 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 tether in in short in tether. And that's short in uh, MPS LDP bonding bindings. As you can see here, this is the LIB routing table. Once the LDP is active, the LSR generates a label locally to the prefix to the prefix in the routing table, and then bundles it with the prefix to send the label mapping message to all LDP labels. When I receive the remote binding 
from the LDP labels, I bundle the text and the local bindings that I have bundled from the spe specific prefix into the LRB. So, of course, now the remote tag in LRB will be used. And we also need to combine the FRB table to get the last hop information about the prefix finally from found the LRB table. Let me put this in here. In here. So now you can see clear. So uh, let me show the, the forwarding table. Show MP MPS DP forwarding table. In here you can see that let's ana analyze the forwarding table. When R1 wants to send data to R4, in here, how the data is transmitted. First analyze the control table. Since everyone learn 4.4.4.4, through OSPF, right? All LSR will generate a label locally for 4.4.4.4 and then bind this label to the prefix to pass it to other LDP labels. As shown in the figure, now when R1 is going to ping 4.4.4.4, R1 has to check this, check its own FIB in this one, in this one, and its next hop is ten da one da one two da two in here. So which is the CEF table, dot that this is an IP load cap. So when I'm showing the show IP CE, CEF, 4.4.4.4. As you can see, the last hop is here and he and uh, his outgoing interface is e ling gang ling zero gang zero so the cf entry indicates that to go to 4.4.4.4 the ip packet is to be stamped with a wallet of 203 right in here and then the packet is Drop to the last hop to ten da one da two one two da two and throw out from the the e the e zero gun zero port. That's two, and that's to the R two receives the tag packet. R two knows that this is a tag packet from the type file of the lawyer two internet brand header of this packet so it looks for its own FIB table. Let me show you the R2 FIB table. So in here as you can see that show MPLS forwarding forwarding table. In here, as you can see, the inbound tag packet has a tag value of 203 in here, right? And then in the LFIB table of R2, 203 needs to be exchanged to 300 in here, and then drop to the that's how to turn the 
one dot two dot three dot three and sent out from the E zero one zero gun one port. Therefore R2 replace the tag with 300 and then throws it to R3. And next R3 receive the, receives, receives the tag pack, package. Sim, uh, similar, to look at your own LRI, LFRB. The R3 will do the same way to uh, R2 and to the R1. So when R3 found the inbound tag 300, let me check this. Let me show you. Let me show you this. Show CF. Show MPRS forwarding table. So, when Astro found that the inbound tag 300 tag package, pop label, the outbound tag is a pop, so the so he pops the top tag. Actually, it's a lawyer, and then directly throws the pop the pop data to one to ten da one da three four da four dot net in here. Now that this in this time it does not lead to eventually its data. This data was passed to our fault. We can verify it. In R four, we can verify in in R one. I'll trace do it. So as you can see, in here, just wait me a second. It waits some time because it's a uh, little snow. As you can see, uh, in in every pass, in every steps, uh, it shows the MPS level two hundred and three hundred. So. This is the whole tracer route and the 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 way to uh, how they forwarding the, the labels. And I can show you because uh, uh, my colleague uh, my colleague Miracle he uh, he talk a lot about the theory of the of of the the, the MPIs. So I just show you and um, how to configure it the simple one, and you can. Uh, have a try in your computer. So the whole configure of MPRS is very simple. It's only have few commands. As you can see, it's the MPRS IP. You need to <coughs> configure all MPRS IP into uh, those in. in <coughs> into those uh, interface. So so this is the hot interface.